Hey there you Xers and welcome to my channel. My name is Aviva and this is a form of lettuce called an endive. Today we're going to be talking about how to get your first job out of being a self-taught UXer, user experience designer, in the job market. So um, why do I feel like I'm qualified to make a video about this topic? Um, I'm currently a UX designer at the biggest website builder in the world, I'm not going to say which one, but I've gotten offers from other companies as well and I chose to go with this one and I feel like I'm pretty qualified to talk about this topic. So I think that there's one thing, okay, let's start with what you obviously already know and then we're gonna talk about what we're missing. This is Mr. Turtle, welcome, welcome. So what you know, you probably know that you need to make a CV. You probably need to know that you're gonna have to showcase some experience in that CV which you either have or you don't have with UX design, which is totally fair, right? Because like we all started somewhere and we started without experience, but the number one thing that companies look for is experience. Sometimes in the US, they will put more of an emphasis on a degree, but for the rest of the world, it's primarily experience. So how do you get experience when you have none? Well, you volunteer. So whether you know someone who has a cafe or maybe even, I don't know, just like a gym business or maybe you want to make a website for your beautiful undive plant, hello, you can open up a website, uh, design it and showcase it to the world. And that counts as experience. If you have someone that is actually contracting you or using you as someone to build a website. So don't wait for people to knock on your door with opportunities for UX design because that typically never happens. Most of the best UX designers, whether self-taught or educated in you know traditional ways, will go and basically create websites for people, either pro bono, meaning free, or they will charge a little bit as well. You'd be surprised how many people out there just don't want to deal with technology and would love someone to come in and do the website for them. So I would highly recommend that you give that a go. The other thing that you probably imagine when you're going in and you're giving the CV is that you're going to have to give a portfolio. So these jobs will count in your portfolio. Now, how many things do you wanna put on your portfolio? So that is a question that everyone always asks me in this field, and the honest answer is between three to five. If you put any more than five projects, they're not gonna click on most of them, so you might as well spare them the time and the decision-making of what to click on, and just give them three of your best works or five of your best works, but try to not overload. And keep in mind, if you're applying for a UX position, your portfolio should present projects that have to do more with the UX kind of stuff. If you're doing something more UI oriented, maybe focus on the UI. Obviously, maybe UX and UI means something different in your area of work or in this company because UI is something that so many different people have interpretations of, but it's always good to check before. Maybe you can message someone on LinkedIn and this is how you're gonna find out exactly what you should be directing your CV to look like and your portfolio to look like as well. So you only wanna show about three to five things. You wanna make your CV nice and juicy for the big day. Um, the third thing is that, okay. So when you're applying, you need to take a gunshot approach, okay? You need to take your ammo and you need to shoot it in every single direction. And this is almost like, you know those guys that will go out to bars and they'll just hit on as many women as they can, and then maybe they'll get laid. Like, maybe. That is you <laughs> looking for a job. And that was me looking for a job too, right? Essentially, people and companies don't really care if you send them multiple CVs again and again and again for the same position. What they can look with, uh, with not the best eye on, that's not really an expression, but what they might think is a little bit off is if you're applying for many roles. So if you're applying for an analyst, a UX designer, a product manager, a developer, if you're doing all of those, on their end, they're gonna be thinking, we don't want a master of none here. Like we want someone who knows what they want and they're focused. So come with that attitude and make it easy for them to know exactly what you're looking for. Take the gunshot approach, apply to so many places, and eventually you're gonna get a couple of yeses. And now, here's the big one. Okay guys, we ready for this? Um, the big thing, sorry for all these accents and stuff, I'm acting super weird, but you know, all these UX design videos, I mean, we're all creatives here, and yet everyone is speaking in such a posh way, right buds? Everyone's being so serious. 
So I just thought, you know, it'd add a little bit of color, right? Like green. Um, so the thing that I think most people miss, you've done your UX work. Maybe you've done a course with Google, maybe you've done like a boot camp. maybe you're just self-taught, maybe you did like the learning process. I would actually tell you that the academic learning people mostly miss this part, okay? So counterintuitive. And it's basically knowing how to do proper research. So the companies that typically get UX designers, and I mean a lot of UX designers, whether it's Salesforce or some other place, um, they have clients and those clients have specific needs. And when you're kind of like in this position of making the best possible website with the best possible design, your artistic view, and this is a hard truth, so don't take this too hard, is that your point of view on art doesn't matter. It's the client's perspective and specifically the client's KPIs, so key performance indicators. So if this design is helping him make KPIs, for example, we'll take kind of, you know, um, not the happiest of designs, but for example, with the like button, like if Facebook knew that having a like button is having people engage more and is keeping people more interested and making them want to post more, that's increasing like three KPIs. But if you are just making a really pretty design, that's not actually helping the company. And companies don't just want pretty, right? They want something that helps them grow as a company. They have their own interests. Just like you wanna make money as a UX designer, they wanna make money as a corporation or a startup. So I would recommend really showing your research. I'm gonna make a special video dedicated to this. If you guys are interested, let me know, maybe by showing me some indicators. Also, those are really nice for the algorithm, so I would thank you for that. Um, but basically just having an aesthetic way to show research that isn't too distracting from your design work, but complements it. So it's almost like storytelling when presenting a design. And typically also when you do job interviews, they'll ask you why you made the design the way that you did. And you should know how to bullshit the design. I, I say bullshit. Let me just clarify. I sell you bullshit because typically when you do this kind of stuff for a like at home assignment, you're getting a made up scenario. But when you're actually doing this for a client, it should be research. You should be doing user interviews, maybe gorilla, maybe A-B testing. You should be doing different things, right? So throughout the process of your design, you're gonna be starting those. And at the end of your design, you're gonna be validating your design. So those are all almost like buzzwords that you should know to say in the interviews. And yeah, so I think that covers it basically. That's your CV, that's your assignment, that's your portfolio, and just basically knowing how to not miss the biggest thing, which is knowing the research. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoy this, this is my first video, so hit that like button, and I will see you next time. See you later. Wow, this is an awkward outro, but Mm, mm, mm. Oh, all that swag.